Hello, I'm Jonathan Weinberg, and uh, this is my second fountain pen review. Uh, what I decided to do is I am going to focus on some of the pens that I really enjoy and have, um, but also have flex nibs, and sort of start with the positive and do some fairly fast reviews of those pens, and then maybe. Um, as I go along, I'll do more obscure pens. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Himalaya version 2, which uses a um, number 6 nib. Uh, I actually have two of those, and it's from Fountain Pen Revolution, which is a very popular co company. Um, they specialize in Indian pens, pens from India, and they're relatively inexpensive, but what's amazing about their pens is that um, they have a metal ultra flex nib that you can get for an extra uh, fee. And um, when it works, it works extremely well. And there are, are many, many reviews about it. Um, uh, here's some truth though. In both cases, I'm going to show you two. These are two of my Himalaya pens. This is the first one that I got a long, quite a long time ago. I think it was in 2018. And this is the second one which I got last year. Uh, this this one is the um, uh, Ultra Flex, and this one is a Flex, right? And I'll talk a little bit about the differences. I'm going to mostly talk about the Ultra Flex. But in both cases, these pens didn't write well when they first got them. But the amazing thing about Fountain Pen Revolution is that the person who owns the company, runs the company, is a guy named um, uh, Kevin. And when I was having problems with the pens, um, I just contacted Kevin and he um, fixed them. And once he fixed them, they just wrote beautifully. Um, so, uh, and, and I couldn't be pleased more with them. And there's something kind of terrific about the fact that you can just, you know, reach out to him and he's very nice and, and doesn't argue with me at all and just, you know, ask questions, you know, want to make sure that the pens were clean and I, of course, had cleaned them and what inks I was using and I tried out different inks before and we decided that he should send me a new, um, nib and, um, housing so anyway so in the end it worked out very well and then both these pens are super favorite pens of mine um i'm noticing actually that this one the older one is missing its metal um ring around the top and that's i probably probably fell off just recently so it's not interesting anyway i love i love the way these pens look i think they're very beautiful so uh what makes it special is this uh, Ultra Flex um, nib, which I hope you can see here, and I'll have pictures of it also. Um, and uh, it costs around another extra $12. Now, the thing about Fountain Pet Revolution is their prices are very reasonable, but they also seem to have sales all the time and coupons and different ways of getting uh, getting a bargain on their on their uh, website so that's another thing that makes them pretty terrific so let's see oh one thing that people like to do is just to have a comparison of sizes so just to give you an idea of what the size is everybody seems to use the metropolitan as a as an example, you'll see that it's about the same size as the Metropolitan. It's not a huge pen, but it's also not a uh, tiny pen. Um, it does post very securely, which is nice. And it's not terribly heavy, but it doesn't, to me, it doesn't seem um, cheap. Um, and it has this very beautiful translucent resin or plastic really 
Um, you know, the basic, this is one of the sort of classic designs of pens. It's based, I believe it's based sort of on the, goes all the way back to the Parco Duo and their Con Conklin durographs sort of look like this. There are a lot of pens that look, look like this. Um, all right, so I'm going to do a uh, writing sample, as everybody does on these things. Um, let's make sure that you can see. Oh, it's very, oh, here we go, FPR, Fountain Pen Revolution. Once again, I'm using, um, I'm going to say it's the Ultraflex. Nib. And this is uh, Pilot. Miki ink and this is the Himalaya version 2 which means it's a number 6 nib and as people as you see on the web um, it's very easy to remove the nib and it has an ebonite feed and uh, unfortunately, the feed doesn't fit in a lot of other pens, but the nib does. So a lot of people um, put the nibs on other pens and experiment with it. But this uh, feed is designed to sort of pour ink into the pen, uh, the nib, which is why it doesn't railroad unless you really push it. So here's the magic to a line which I would say is sort of like a fine to medium line a kind of Western and then you can get really thick and you see though that it is extremely wet so right and then here is the I'm not very good at these clear liqueurs but everybody likes them and look at that it's kind of amazing All right, so there are some railroading as I sped up. But if you go s relatively slowly, it's fine. Okay, and that was my terrible handwriting. say reverse writing people always do that but I don't reverse write when you can do that because it's so wet um, here's some sort of thick cross hatching light now the thing about this, which I haven't mentioned, is that it's incredibly smooth. Which is not true of, for example, the Falcon Extra Fine by Pilot. Okay. You know, for point of comparison, I am going to try out the same pen, but with the Fountain Revolution regular flex, which doesn't, I, I don't, I don't know, it might be a few dollars extra, but isn't, isn't like $12 extra. Exactly the same. So this is the flex nib.
again, it's very wet. And you can see you're not getting <coughs> the same thickness. This is still kind of, I would say this is semi-flex. It's not unlike the Lorelei 691 that I was showing you the other day. Maybe a little more than that, actually. Um, This is a little drier. Right. And it's very wet. I forgot to do the wetness. Okay. But likewise, it's extremely smooth and pleasure. The old, the old pen feels very nice, at least in my hand. Um, it's, it's not particularly rough and it's this very beautiful um, uh, material. Um, so I just, as I say, I just noticed that the band is missing. I have a feeling the band is somewhere somewhere in the house, which I'm going to immediately go look for it. Because I kind of, this is one of my first fountain pens I ever bought. I really um, love it. So I'm a little upset that it's the band has fallen off. I don't think that's a sign of the um, shoddiness of the workmanship. I think that's a sign of uh, my lack of uh, care, taking care of it. Because I've really used this pen a lot over the years. Okay, um, now what I'm going to do is do a drawing with, I'm not only going to draw him with the uh, Ultraflex. Just to sum up, I think this is a really great pen. Oh, one one other thing I thought might be fun to do would be just to do a quick comparison of some other Ultra Flex or Flex pens that everybody has. So I just thought I'd do a um, quick sort of writing test. So let's see. Okay, here's the Ultra Flex again. So this is the fountain. It's the ultra flex. And I 
Alright, so that's the Ultraflex. Now this is the just regular flex. I'm pushing down pretty hard. Okay. Now Here is your Pilot Falcon. So this is the Pilot Falcon. Now the thing about the Pilot Falcon is that it's a very, this is the extra fine. So it's very fine, much finer than the fine part of the uh, Falcon, excuse me, the um, Fountain Re uh, uh, Re Pen Revolution Ultra Flex. So you have to keep that in mind. Anyway, so it goes from a extra fine to maybe a medium. It's also very scratchy when it does that. But let's keep in mind that it's very incredibly reliable pen. You can have it capped for months and it will still still write and does just a wonderful fine line. Okay, then for comparison's sake I have the, I'm going to do a review on these different pens later, but I have the Pilot 912 with the Falcon nib. Okay, you can see that that goes from a fine, extra fine, to something that's much more like a broad, almost. But still not as thick as the uh, Ultraflex. So just to... Right. Right, but the Ultrafex is really starting at a medium and going to almost like a double broad, while the Pilot 912 is definitely an extra fine that goes almost really to a broad, I would say, something like that. And again, the I find the 912 is very, very reliable, and it's also not so wet. So when you're drawing, probably it's, it, you know, there is a problem with the um, Ultraflex that it is putting down so much ink in terms of smearing. You have to be very careful. One other pen that I'm going to review, and I don't think it gets enough respect, um, is a Conklin, which uses um, what they call the Omniflex. Monteverdi pens also use that. And I actually had to find that... Um, nib to be very very good you know again it's not it's really only semi flex um, as you'll see but this is the Conklin well it's the, the pen itself is the um, word gauge so it's a piston I'll do a some thing on that later and you, See, and that goes from like a medium to an X to a bold, I guess. But it's very, I find it very, very reliable. And it's very smooth. So if we put that next to the Falcon Ply Pen Flex, you can see. Not getting, at least not getting a huge amount of different widths. I'm getting quite a lot, some, and it's a nice pen to write with. All right, and draw with, actually.
Okie dokie. That's it.